I'm back. Oh my God, what's that thing up there towering above us? Oh my God, it is towering. Yeah, it's because I'm only four inches tall. <laughs> That's only a six inch model. <laughs> I mean, the way I look at it, the truth is that this was molded together in Milton Keynes for the devil. It's a stealth. It's, well, it could be, might not be the devil. It could be one of them planes. But whatever the story, this is different than them. Yeah, so we're going to have a look at it. Well, actually, it's sort of different. Well, it's different because this is the only one and here it is. And that's the story. And uh, if you want to learn about this one, well, this is the only place you're going to be able to do that. How <laughs> scary. But I'm going to move this cab out of the way, bring the app down, and then uh, we can go a bit further. Hold on. Now, I have got some paperwork here to do a little bit of talking about it, because I don't know everything. Oh, you do. Well, you can tell me. Bring in the text. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's cover what we cover. So like I said, it's a SC20 HSB. And the HSB, the SB is the bit that you can't buy. Well, you will be able to buy it. It will be coming out, but uh, right at this second, the truth is, from what I'm told, is Marshall sort of shut down. They're not really making anything. And this is including this one. Uh, there were very, very few of these that ever went out anywhere. But this one went out to uh, Fair Deal Music over in Birmingham Way. Here's a link. And I'll put a link down in the text. You know, the very first time I plugged into it, it wasn't in a shop. But it could have been, but it wasn't. I went to a show uh, back in January. And it's, uh, it was about the middle of January, just before all the aggro touched down with the, uh, the corona thing, the coronavirus. And this was on a stand uh, for Fair Deal Music. Fair Deal uh, Music Store, that is. Uh, the link's in the, uh, down below there, and uh, you can go and have a look at their site. In fact, I think it's still got this one on it. It says they're in stock, but I'm pretty sure they're not. Well, I know they're not. Let's put it that way around. So, I walked across and plugged in, and then it was in front of me as I played. I could tell right off that this was the Sound of Rock. Marshall. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the specs of this thing. What Marshall say, the original JCM 800 2203. You remember that one, don't you? Oh, you don't. You know what you're missing? It changed the face of modern amplifiers, it says here, forever. Well, I think it did. Updated and enhanced, this SC20H SB is here to do it all over again. Hmm. Yeah, it replicates the first amp that truly embodied the overdriven sound of heavy rock, portable, uh, well it is portable, SC20 HSB, brings timeless sound to the modern guitarist with the option to switch between 20 watt and 5 watt, like I said, at the flick of a button. Well, I'd have said at the flick of a switch, but different people, well, you know how they like. They don't always describe things as they should be, do they? I mean, this is the definitive brand, isn't it, Marshall? Surely. Oh, you're going to tell me it isn't? Oh, it is. You might say that if you're in America, but here in England, this is king, right? The point is, there's all these other brands that have come on. Well, you can name them. You'll know all the other brands. There's so many brands now. Uh, at 20 and 25 watt amps. Even PRS is in on the act at a claim 15 watts that'll blow your windows out. But none of them are really like this Marshall here. This is the sound of rock. There's no question. You think back to all those 80s, all those times across the 80s. I don't mean mid 70s, I mean 80s. And the uh, JCM 800 was it. It ruled the earth. It must tell you something. This is the granddaddy. No, not me. 
So what we need to do, we need to get down to it, right? So I'm going to whip this chassis out now. We're going to get down, up close and personal, right between the eyes. And we're going to have a look at the outside of the chassis, the inside of the chassis, the head, the tail, the whole damn thing. And we're going to come back up afterwards and uh, have a look at the front and back of the amp, as we always do on inside and outside reviews. And then, of course, what we're going to do is have a look at the speaker cab quickly. Not so much to look at in that. But then we're going to go into the studio and uh, do a bit of playing, you know. Yeah, whatever it might turn out to be. I, I don't know yet, but uh, I'll probably find a couple of little short backing tracks or something. I don't know. If you've never heard a Marshall uh, amp like one of these before, where have you been? Oh, oh and by the way, just before I do uh, move off this subject and we go down there, as well as this amp in this series, uh, this JCM800, they do actually make, uh, in the whole series, uh, a 1959 equivalent, you know, the earlier one than this. You will have seen it. I forget its model designation, but uh, they do make one. But I haven't seen that one in black, in stealth mode, right? So you be having a look around at that. And if you can find one of, one of those earlier ones, one of those 1959 types in stealth mode, put it down there, let me know. And by the way, if you're in America and you do find any prices for these things, just bung them below and tell everybody what they cost in America. Because here in the UK, uh, well, they're not that cheap, but I'll bet you they're cheaper than they are in America. Anyway, let me get this out now and uh, let's move forward. This is all exciting stuff. I like some of the Marshall stuff, don't you? Especially at the prices. It can cost you a list price in the UK of £899, but I've seen it cheaper. And if you go uh, off to uh, Fair Deal Music, he does it cheaper. I've seen him put it on his site at £699 for the amp head. And he does the uh, speaker chip. We'll come back to pricing later. I just wanted to get that thing going about uh, how expensive all the competition is compared to this thing. Yeah. Well, that didn't take long, did it? Here it is. These things don't look that big, of course. And they never are going to be that big on a 20 watt amp. And I, I saw the same thing in the Sur. Uh, I think their uh, power transformer was a bit bigger. But it's pretty much irrelevant as long as it works and uh, every amp has different current drawers and things like that so you know it is what it is uh yeah all very uh, very exciting don't you think well scarily here we are around the front and on the top i'm here to look at the top really so here we go here's the uh the power transformer it's not that big. I'm the first guy in the world to admit that, especially after the operation. <laughs> then we move along down to that one. That's the output transformer. There it is. All nice. Not much else to see. We've got three preamp tubes, one pie tube and two, uh, two that do the normal work, shall we say. Probably them two, and this one does this. It's balancing. Yeah. Well, what are they? It's a great question. Let's have a look. Well, these are, it just says, you must probably see a picture up there now. It just says Marshall ECC 83 valve 00449, I think it said. Uh, 1219. So there's no brand on them, I'm afraid. I've got a pretty good guess who they are. That's the first one. And the second one's identical. Let's have a look at the third one. Yeah, and there is one difference between these two and that one. And what it is, I've seen this many times before. This tube, uh, if you notice, it's in red uh, on its logo. And the others, although you can't really see them now, are in gold. And what that denotes, from what I gather, is that this is, uh, this is a tube, the first one in the list. It, uh, it's, it's, it's a high gain tube and what these others tend to be more normal, let's put it that way. Uh, 
They're all classed as ECC83s, by the way, in the specification. But of course, that means they could be a 12AX7 or a 7025 or a, well, you name it. You could even put a 5751 in some of these. Uh, if you want to get that uh, less gain, in particular that one, I guess. Now, hey, listen, see these clamps? I wouldn't say they're tough. What I would say is these tubes are never going to come out. They're like crocodile teeth, them are. And uh, I did take one out. You might be able to see on one of the tubes where it scratched the tube. Uh, and that's why I'm not taking them out twice. So you can see the tube's a Marshall EL34 valve, it says here, 00105. That's the model. That's what it all says. There's two of them. And EL34s, you know, you could get some... Uh, some wattage out of them. It all depends how it's thrown together or put together, should I say. Uh, but in this case, these tubes, believe it or not, are JJ tubes and there's a little JJ logo down in the corner. Now I do know that Marshall used to fit Svetlana, but I suppose they can't get them these days because JJ put them out of business or something like that. I don't know. Uh, JJ tubes, they are what they are. Hopefully Marshall's had these burned in and tested for a while. It looks to me like they have, because I can see all the, the numbers down at the bottom and the, the matching of the tubes and the rest. And it's all 100% the same. So I'm happy that they matched. That's the first thing. And secondly, I'm hoping, happy that they match, but hoping that they've been burned in as well. I think Marshall do actually burn these in, uh, these amps in for a while. Uh, if I remember back from my visit to the Marshall factories. Actually, there's a couple of things we'll talk about. One is that this case is uh, got all its uh, captive nuts in the top, if you look careful. I know, I know, it's a funny angle, but don't worry, you can still see it. And the important thing is there, it says M2020 06 001 number one. Now, I've showed you the the uh, serial number before, but I've showed you it again now. Okay, well, I took a quick look around inside here, and it's really, it comprises of one back board, one front board, one main board. Now the main board does include all of the preamp tubes and all of the power amp tubes, and yes, they are socketed onto that board with a, obviously, with a socket. And I'm led to believe there's lots of other brands in these 20, 20 watt jobbies that are out there, or 30 watts. There are all uh, actually very similar. There's no uh, improvement over what you see here. I did notice on this amp, if you look here at the end, the ends are not uh, built up as martial amps normally are. And I, I think that's partially down to the uh, costs of this amp. You've got to remember this amp's made in England and when you're making an amp in England every penny matters, right? Labour is expensive. There's no doubt about that. I don't think there's any compromise on any components. It's pretty much like I'd expect it to be. It all looks pretty good actually. But these ends are missing. It would have been nice to have ends on there but you know, commercially, I guess it makes no real difference. It's in a pretty tough case. Well, it's in a very, very tough case, if you want the truth. So what I think we'll do is I think uh, we'll zoom in a bit closer. I think we'll go from, uh, from that end and work our way this way. Well, here we are, a little closer. Right, well, where do we go from here? Well, we start with this power transformer the input transformer and there's good news and bad news the good news is this one works absolutely perfectly the bad news is as you can clearly see there are no secondary or third inputs on this so this transformer here is made for the UK and that's the end of story and I can tell you now well you might not be able to see it from there there's a serial number just at the back there. Maybe I'll put it on the screen. 
Well, that serial number starts off with the letter M. M. And that denotes that this amplifier is for the UK market, I believe. If I remember right. So, you guys in the States can't import one of these uh, from England. And, uh, yeah, use it. Unless you've got one of them things that steps your voltage up. Which isn't a good idea, really. So, you're probably better buying one of these through the right channels in the USA or wherever you are, whatever country you're in. Of course, if you're in Singapore or if you're in Australia or one or two other places, uh, like I think uh, I think Malaysia as well, I could be wrong. But you, you'll know the places that operate on 230 to 250 volts. Well, you could use one of these amps. Simple as that, yeah. Well, let's move along a little bit. And you can see, I always like to point this out, there are a couple of fuses there. You can see them inside. So if your amp ever goes off, and you've checked those on the outside, which we'll come to later, and it's still dead, come inside and look at them. It Well, unless you can kill yourself and then get somebody else check them, if that's the case. Now in this whole section here, let me have a look. This whole section here, I think this relates, as most of them do, uh, down here to power supply area. It's a little power supply area. So this side, if you look down there, you can see, well I hope you can see it. I think you can see it, yeah. It comes around there. Tube. And that's uh, there, it says U5 or V5. I think it's me. Uh, no, it's U5. We've got a U4 there. And no doubt there's more that way. But we won't worry about that for now. One other thing I want to draw your attention to, though, is you see these 5 watt sort of ceramic resistors? You can see them there, can't you? If you look on this uh, PCB, they're actually lifted from the PCB. And they're lifted on these. These standoffs. There's one, two, three, four of them there. In fact, I think that's all of them. Each and every one of them are standing off the board. And so are a lot of the resistors. You can see. Well, hope, hopefully you can. Uh, they're all standing up off the board. See that? Well, they don't stand off the board for no reason. If you think about uh, a resistor like this, these are why, these, why these things matter. When you're looking at reviews that resistor there is a five watt resistor it's a 1k five watt that's a 150 uh, sorry yeah 150 ohm five watt that's a 1k and that's 150. but these things here they're not made of ceramic for no reason they made a ceramic because they get hot and that's exactly why marshall has them on a standoff off the board because if you was to mount these on the board so they're touching the board that board's going to get hot right underneath where they mount and you can believe it or not I've seen some amplifiers in exactly like that with this mounted on the board that's always concerning people talk about tubes having sockets mounted on the board. Well, indeed, as these are, but they never talk about them, do they? They never talk about these being on the PCB, and melting the PCB or getting it extra hot. Just a point. Now, I know that Marshall actually does make these PCBs on a machine because I've been to the factory and watched other uh, Marshall amps go down that production line on their flow solder machines and this is no exception this has been done on those flow solder machines because I can tell by just looking at it but I want to draw your attention to this uh, tube here as an example and you can very clearly see that that's been soldered into place by hand you can just tell if you look at it you can even see the flux here see oh I can't get it off <laughs> it's all there uh, so there is some uh, hand soldering going on on these amps, even at this price. 
which is quite uh, it's quite scary really uh, but good in its own way actually just looking underneath the board uh, that's a power tube and so is this one at the side these are power tube sections the uh, the preamps further down the board that way so let's move that way a bit further more into the actual preamp section okay well this little bit here if you can see that it's sort of hidden behind that but you can see there's a sort of preamp tube there and this is the uh, the pie tube you know the balancing tube here it is we're sort of going from power amp down there now to this balancing tube that is in this area of the circuit notice there's a fuse right there so that's three fuses up to now so just before I go any anywhere further actually I just wanted to draw your attention to that chip there'll be something on the screen talking about what that is right now well there's no question now this is absolutely the preamp section uh, so what we've got is the input here coming off this board you can see that board and it sort of comes down into here right there so preamp tube one preamp tube two so it's going this way uh, like little relays there's a few little relays there's one behind there there's one there and so on and so forth so quite a fair few di different bits and pieces notice again that all these are sort of standing off the board you see that all the resistors the tiny ones aren't if you look there but as soon as you get to any greater wattage of resistors they stand off the board that's obviously been done from experience as I think there's any doubt about that but looking at the overall quality of this board uh, yeah it's all pretty good isn't it there's nothing where you could really say oh they've cut corners on the board because they haven't it's all there it's got reasonably good brands of chips well I guess they, they like everybody else's uh, and the capacitors are pretty much like everybody else's as well so there's not really much more you can say I guess for the money you're paying for this that it's a pretty good deal now personally I don't think there's any question that you know when you've got an amp being sold for about uh, I think you can pick these up for about 650 pounds including 20% tax they probably have a retail of something like 500 and, I don't know 550 quid or 520 pound plus tax I mean that's a cheap price for an amp like this compared to those others remember that most of them must start at 1300 quid and go all the way up to ridiculous money so something has to be cut somewhere and, and Marshall might disagree with me on this but to, if you look at that PCB along there you can see that it's got some very small potentiometers on it yeah them really are potentiometers and uh, not much you can say about them is it but to be fair to the amp remember this amp is made in the UK and costs mount up and mount up and mount up and I, I guess Marshall doesn't want to end up with a 12 or 1300 pound 20 watt amplifier because I don't think it'd do many people many much good in any case there they are but you can look at that board and I can tell you now you'd be able to call Marshall up and buy a replacement board it won't cost much money that won't I'm telling you now it won't uh, so well what's lost about it well what could be lost about it is if you was gigging arenas or something and pot number three failed I doubt you'd have one in your toolbox but if it was that critical well surely you'd buy one of these and keep it as spares wouldn't you so it's very difficult to argue with that really except from oh it doesn't look right which is what some people will say undoubtedly they will say it nothing's standard anyway anymore is it so I doubt you'd be gigging arenas with this amp anyway <laughs> that's the point isn't it well there we are again this comprises actually two boards there's a board at that side and a board this side they're like little modules that you could very very easily screw back on if you need to one of you this one's got a few switches on it and here's the other one for the uh, for the speaker section 
that's coming out that wire in there is coming off the output transformer I believe yeah looks that way to me oh you're going touring in big arenas <laughs> you're probably playing in your bedroom if you want the truth but a lot of guys are like that you're probably just an ordinary guy like me I mean I might take it out into the studio and I might get a little bit louder than you might but at the end of the day listen it's going to do the job and I honestly if one of these boards failed I'd be getting on to Marshall and asking Marshall for a replacement or asking them to fit it or whatever or get the dealer to it if it's under warranty or whatever but these won't cost much money I'm telling you now uh, I don't know the prices exactly but I could go and find them they're not expensive and uh, the great thing about the amp is it's modular like that it's a brilliant amp for the money oh before we move away from inside the uh, the chassis I just wanted to show you these two uh, switches one's a standby and the other one's the power arm there they are at the front and once again they're not held in with any chewing gum or anything like that that some makers do uh, these are exactly the way they should be right none of this cheap half a job stuff well actually I'm not going to look around the back right now what I'm going to do is put it back in its case and uh, we'll go a bit further but just before I do put it in its case I just want to show you a little bit about the inside of the case then we'll come to the back when I've refitted the chassis into that case and you know what what a great case this is this is not any flimsy stuff like you see on most of that gear out there this is built like it means business <laughs> it surely does aluminium base plate uh, which keeps all the uh, emissions in there of course it keeps the other emissions out as well you can see that uh, this is this is like uh, oh, what size is that it's at least half an inch thick for this material at least half an inch yeah and, and another thing I liked about it uh, when I was pulling it apart earlier is if you know where you, you get all these little screws that go around and hold the plate on you'll see them later they're actually they've got uh, inserts in the wood just like the uh, the PT-15 had the sir uh, so when you put the screws in and out you're not actually wearing out the uh, the wood itself you know like in the old days so to speak uh, the old amps used to be like that but not anymore yeah it's all good uh, well I, the other thing I like is you probably can't see it there but there's a little white sticker in there that's uh, a quality assurance check and who did the covering I like to see that sort of thing don't you overall pretty cool case yeah and this one's just that much different than the rest well, I'm not going to bore you too much uh, around this back and around the front because there's not really that much to look at uh, the great thing about an amp like this is you plug it on to a speaker you turn it on and I'm telling you now within one minute one minute you're playing with probably one of the best tones out there no ifs or buts anyway let's get down to it here's the sticker this one's M for the UK 2020 06 I believe is the month 001 number one so that's number one of number one <laughs> I'll let you believe that for a while and we'll come back to you later so let's move along a bit what we've got in everywhere where there's red you can see that there's a little board behind there that handles just these red sockets so like I showed you you know you're able to switch them out this is where your speakers go you can have 116 2 8 ohms or 2 16s or you can have one 4 ohm or 2 8 ohms so the speakers are really well covered no doubt about it you've got a few warnings down here that you can read as we go along uh, just for your safety really more than anything but it's good that they're on there I see so many products that don't have things like that on them uh, nobody seems to care well you won't care until, until you're dead really <laughs> let's move along right well moving a little bit further down this is the other board 
that we were talking about. So you could flip this board out and put another one in. This is a DI out and this DI out can go off into whatever you're going to be recording like a door or something like that, push it into the desk and all them other things. And it does actually have a speaker simulator or speaker emulator actually on that. So when it comes out, it'll sound good right there and then. It's none of this faffing around, you know. Move along a bit further, we've got an FX loop for send and return and we can turn it on or off. And if you turn it off, it's completely out of circuit they say. Okay, well I'm not going to bore you too long with it except to say there's the name, there's the address, there's the company, here's all the uh, CE approvals, the WE, the Rush compliance, where it's made, everything you'd ever want to know about this amp is all there, it's all completely dead right because that's the way Marshall PLC works. This thing meets all the requirements which it's a real nice thing to see. Moving along, we've got the mains input. Uh, but there it is. It's got a fuse in the bottom. This fuse on this one is probably a 250. It doesn't really matter. It could be 230 there. It doesn't really matter. But that's where it goes in. It's the kettle lead. The one we've all seen. And everything around the back is just plain and simply good. Oh, this is the point where everybody says, oh, this amp's the same as all the other ones. Well, it is, but it isn't. It definitely is the stealth one, this is. And uh, the others aren't stealth ones, so there. Let's move along. It's uh, got a power. Lights up when you've got your power on. How can you argue with that? And then you've got this low, standby, or high. Well, when it's in high mode, it's 20 watts. And when it's in low mode, it's 5 watts. And, uh, yeah, 5 watts isn't a particularly high output, but uh, it's loud enough to matter, I'll tell you that now. Uh, just before anybody jumps up and says, 5 watts, don't it? Yes, it will. <laughs> Put it on a 4B12, 5 watts will still be very loud. So do remember that, won't you? Uh, there's its logo in all its glory, and it just says JCM 800 Lead Series Studio, but it doesn't actually tell you that it's the stealth amp. But you've only got to take one look at this thing and know that it's stealth. Everything's in black. Yeah. I think it looks great, actually. Looks nicer than the than the original uh, reissue in gold and white and stuff like that, you know. It's not. And in a way that anybody that's been around a while would know, <laughs> we've got a presence, a bass, middle and treble. It's absolutely standard on all of these older styled amplifiers and it really is an industry standard it really is oh my god it looks to me like somebody's had the uh, the master cranked <laughs> well they might yeah so it's got a master volume which uh this model's renowned for but the earlier 1959 didn't have you can mod it and here's the the sort of preamp volume uh there it is. Nice. We've also got uh, a low sensitivity and a high sensitivity. I guess mine will be in this high one all the time, but yours might not be. You might want to actually try and get a clean tone. <laughs> well, you can. You can get a clean tone, but uh, it's very easy uh, to use the volume pot as much as anything on your, uh, on your guitar. And off you go. Yeah, all very nice. Now then, look here. If you want to stand out in the crowd, be one of the rams rather than a sheep, this is the amp to do it. You know what the sheeps look like, don't you? I mean, look at it. The piping round the edges in black. The cover's black. Casey's black as well as it always was. But the logo's black too. Look at it. Stealthy, man. Yeah. I mean, it just looks rock and roll, doesn't it? That piping. I think it just looks brilliant and linked with the cab that's also decored in exactly the same way. What a great amp. You haven't even heard it yet, but here I am saying what a great amp, and it's because it is. 
I haven't found a single real problem. Not really. I mean, we can all talk about, it's been made down to the price, it hasn't got this or it doesn't do that. Listen, most amps are like that these days, most of them, including the expensive ones. We've all seen them. For what you're paying here, this is awesome. What am I doing? Who knows? <laughs> what an awesome little lamp. A little 20 watt thing, you know. That's what I like to see. An amp like this that's moved forward with the craze, because it is a craze, of having these tiny little amps. But, you know, when I say that, you've got to step back a little bit and realise that everybody doesn't play in an arena. In fact, these days, Let's be serious for a moment. How many people go out gigging regularly? I don't know about you guys, but all the venues have vanished. Well, they have at the minute with the coronavirus, everywhere's shut. But even if we were in normal times, over here in England at least, and I'm pretty sure it's the same over there, the places where you could go and gig, or where you used to do that, uh, are getting less and less and less and less. And it's for multiple reasons. One of the reasons, I know it sounds stupid, but one of the reasons is the supermarkets, you know, them big stores where you go and buy your food. When you go shopping around there, what's this got to do with amps? You'd be amazed. When you go shopping around there, you buy the beer, don't you, in the cans? Yeah, and you buy it in the cans because it's cheap, isn't it? It is. Come on, own up. So you buy your beer and you go home, and guess what? Oh, you don't go down the pub. This is one of the reasons why you see pubs these days. They're sort of turning into semi-restaurants. You never noticed. A lot of them are like that. I know in America there are a lot of them, a real lot of them are like that. But how many of these uh, sports clubs do you go in playing gigs? I, don't, I go in them when I'm in the States and I never see any bands. You know, you've got to look around for bands. It's not quite what it used to be. So a lot of people just like you. Yeah, you're ordinary guys, just like me. I keep saying it in every video, and there's reason to do that. Because it's the ordinary guys that's buying this gear. But the ordinary guys that might do the odd little pub thing, or might this or might that, or even play at home, or in the bedroom, you know, uh, yeah. You're back to this size amp. 5 watts, or 20 watts, or one of them PT-15s that can, you know, do all the things. You might go down that. You might buy one of the Freedmans for 1300 quid in England or more. 1399 I think they were. Yeah. And uh, if I had a choice, I'm being serious here. If I have a choice between buying that uh, Jerry Cantrell Freedman for £1,350, I think it was. Or this for £650. So six, yeah, about that. Street price. I'm afraid I'd buy this one every time, and you could say, "Ah, oh, yeah, but it doesn't have the doesn't have the drive of the uh, the Friedman." No, it doesn't have the price either. And you know what? I can make this drive for about uh, yeah, about seventy quid up for a second hand pedal, and that's all you need. It's all we've ever needed. No matter what you might think you need, that's what you really need. Yeah, there it is. It's towering above me again. And all it is is a 1x12. <laughs> By the way, this is a 70 watt cab, this is. 70 watts. So if you want to use it for anything other than just the 20 watt amp, you could do. I mean, 70 watts. But it's still got the same trim around the edge. All black. It's got the same black Marshall logo. You won't find them anywhere, any old place. It has to be a stealth, actually, you don't get that. You go back to the ordinary, boring, everyday. Well, I have to say it's a boring logo. It's a Marshall White logo. And the reason is, I've seen it that long. <laughs> oh my God. Even in 1968, when I first left school, uh, give or take, uh, there it was, glaring me in the face on every band I went to see. Every band. They were all Marshall. And uh, many of them still are. Although you see these other things creeping in these days don't think they're quite in the same league. But that's another story. Now, just before we get any closer, I just pulled this off the top. It's got a little Marshall sticker. 
and it's got one of them sort of things that you turn it at angles and you see a hologram. You know what I mean, don't you? Yeah, and it, it's emblazoned in this gold label. Jim Marshall, the father of loud. You know, companies would love to be able to do what Jim Marshall did <laughs> and still is doing. Not Jim himself, but basically the family and the rest of them. They're all there down in Milton Keynes. Great bunch of guys when I've been down there. And uh, what more can I say about them guys? They're all so friendly and helpful and all the rest. Oh, and by the way, if Phil Wells ever sees this video, how are you doing, Phil? It was good to meet you that time. Well, here's the back of the cab, and you can see that it's a semi-open back cab. That's the, the first thing about it. Second thing you can see about this is that it's a Celestian G12, 70 watt. It says here, Celestian International Limited. There it is, 70 watt V-type. And uh, yeah, it carries the name okay, but unfortunately this speaker's actually made in China. It's not made in the UK anymore, as Celestian used to be. And uh, I'm not surprised, really. <laughs> why, why would I be surprised? Made in China, so whether it's the same as... Do they still even make them in England? I'm not sure. If you think so, well, put it down below. Up the top here, we've got the singular input. You can just about see it on camera. I'm not going to move around too much with that. But there it is. It looks pretty much like all the Marshall Cab inputs have been forever. And, uh, yeah, I guess you could take these backs off, by the way. If, well, at least that one. Uh, if you wanted to have it more open at back. But, uh, personally, I'd, I'd have preferred to have an extra one there and have it sealed off myself. But there you go. You get what you get. That's the design. and So there. I always love to see stuff like this as well, where you've got this sticker put on here, you can see it there. Uh, finishing, D. Murphy. And that guy has had to put his sticker on there to confirm that he's finished this product in exactly the way it should be. No ifs, no buts, no flaws, and all for the price of this thing, which will come back to price presently. According to this, uh, this is called an SC112, but this actual cab isn't just an SC112. Its proper name is an SC112 SB. I guess that's for Stealth Black. Might be. But that's its real name. So if you just order one of these, you'll get the standard one. So don't do that, will you? <laughs> anyway, it's a lead 1B12. It's 16 ohms. It's CE approved. It's WE. It's got no rush compliance on there, or at least there's no thing for it. It's made in England, it says. We know the speaker isn't. Marshall amplification, there's its address, there's everything about it, it's all compliant, it's all very good really. So here we are, back around the front. This cab, by the way, lists at £429 in the UK, including 20% of tax. Remember that. So that's a fair amount of uh, tax that would be taking this down to probably about, I don't know, about 330 or something like that. But you can buy it cheaper. I've seen them as, uh, if you go to Fair Deal, Fair Deal, it's down there. I'll probably put it on the screen here as well. If you go to Fair Deal, I think they're signing them at about 350 or 360, 350, something like that. Uh, so you're getting a discount off that. And again, that includes 20% tax. So I'm not sure what the Americans will be paying for this. But uh, like I said before, if you can put your figures down below, I'd love to be able to see that. Uh, but do bear in mind, you, you couldn't convert the amp from an English one. Just want to cover another few things as well. Uh, weights. How heavy is this thing? You know, guys often talk to me and say, ah, oh, yeah, but I can't hug it. There's a guy just the other day. Yeah, this chap I was speaking to, he was saying, ah, uh, oh, yeah, but I've got a bad back. I can't lift this, so I can't do that. And, you know, that can be difficult. As you get older, it does get harder. Uh, there's no doubt about that. But this, uh, this weighs about 20.7 pounds in weight. I don't know what that is in kilograms, but I couldn't be bothered to convert it. I prefer pounds. Yeah, and the cab, you know, the one that's down on the floor there, that's 27 pounds, so that's a little bit heavier. But this one's not bad at 20 pounds. I mean, you might have uh, some other cab that's lighter. I don't know, it depends if you want the stealth mode. I mean, to me, it just 
just looks at everything, aren't they? Not here, no, there. <laughs> these are these are they faded. Now I could talk for hours about pricing and all sorts of different little things. Uh, but I think in the case of something like uh, a Marshall amp, well, it's great value. Let's not worry too much about the exact price, but it's substantially less cost to most other amps that are made in England on the market for this 20 watt or 5 watt. And it, it's a unique model, you know. Well, we can argue that, well, there's loads of those types, uh, uh, you know, the whole series. Yeah, well, there is, but not like this one. And this one sort of makes you look a bit different. And uh, I think that, that does matter. I mean, it attracted my attention straight away when I saw it on the stand at that show. I wanted to buy it there and then, but they, <laughs> they wouldn't sell it me there and then. Well, they would, but I had to wait. But the stories turned out that the coronavirus made it appear. So here it is, and I, I'm really pleased that it's here. I'm not so pleased about the virus, but for me, it's had its uh, benefits, I suppose, if we can call it that. I'm stuck at home as well. It is a benefit, but not as I'd like it. I'd sooner be at work, wouldn't you? So where, where does this fit in the overall scene? Well, it could be used for gigs. 20 watts doesn't sound much, but you put it on a 4x12 and it'll move you across the room a bit. 20 watts is actually quite loud. Uh, it's more of an old style of amp, you could argue. But listen, <laughs> go and take a decent tube screamer and stuff that in the front of this. Oh my God, yeah, it'll be good. That's oh, my biker buddies. There they go. There's no place around, you could hear him go, couldn't you? I might leave that in the video. <laughs> yeah, so you've got the 5 watt and the 20 watt. And to me, this is an amp that's been designed, not for gigging guitarists, really. Not really. You could. But it's for the ordinary guys, like I've said. And uh, I think for what you pay, I think it's an absolutely brilliant, brilliant uh, bargain, actually. Uh, and you're backed up by Marshall. And you know Marshall has a pretty decent warranty. Okay, well, there's no warranty shown in the uh, in the handbook, and I'm not actually anywhere near a PC. But uh, most what Marshall stuff has a, has a five-year warranty. Now, it might might be less on this, but it might not. And uh, I don't see Marshall turning you away anytime soon, providing you don't neglect the product. They like that. That's the sort of company Marshall is. Think about their customers. No, I've always found that. If you get a problem, you can even ring them up and speak to these people and uh, they'll help you. They might send you back to a dealer to get something done, but where can you ring the manufacturer up? Just willy-nilly and hey, and there they are on the phone. Fabulous. And by the way, if anybody's got any questions on this uh, particular model, or the speaker, and uh, I don't know them, no problem. I'll give Marshall a call and I'll ask them and uh, I'll get back and post down there as a reply uh, what they say. How's that sound? <laughs> so the last of the summing up and then the score. Well the summing up's very, very pretty simple really. Uh, you gain a piece of history here that looks somewhat different, more stealthy. Yeah so it makes you a little bit different than your average guy. It's not the 1959, it's the better one. Well, it's an opinion, isn't it? Some people love that 1959 uh, alternative model, but no stealth mode, I don't think. So so it drove me to this one. That's my, my answer. And so did the speaker card, which I don't usually buy. I wanted the pair. Yeah. It's a bit like having apples and pears, but you've got you've run out of pears. You've got to have the two, haven't you? Yeah, great value, really great value. You can take 699 and 350. That's about 1100. Might be a little bit more than that. But that's sort of money for a setup like this. Might be a little bit more, it just depends. Uh, 
But yeah, sounds good. You're gonna hear it any second now. And there's little not to like. Really, honestly, so little not to like. In fact, I can't think of anything that, that I don't like about it. It's one thing that where I could say, oh, that would have looked nicer. It would have looked nicer. Not that it necessarily is nicer. It's a subjective opinion. These would have been nicer in gold. Gold and black. Oh, yeah. That would have worked. Not that it matters. You can change that in 10 minutes anyway. But, uh, yeah. But these are nicer in black. And I think the white lettering works really well. Everything's good. So what about the score? Well, <laughs> and I'll include the speaker on that. Uh, just in case it pushes it back a bit or not. To be honest, I'd give it 10. <laughs> you knew it was going to be 10. For the price, for what you get, everything, everything about it is good. It's a runner. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful to Fair Deal for letting me have this one way before anybody else. And this was their one. And I uh, really appreciate that because it lets you guys see what sort of things coming along before you can actually get one. And that's a good idea. So, yeah, it's got to be a 10 out of 10. For that price, compared to all the other things that I've looked at recently, all of them, that and that are probably the bargain of the times right now. Well, they will be in about a month, I guess. Probably be a month might be quicker than that you never know in the uk and you know being shut at home and all that stuff uh, but i'm sure that as soon as marshall can actually get this out the door they will but i'm pretty sure as well i might be wrong but i, I don't think i am this could well be uh, a limited run so if you want one of these you can buy the standard thing but if you want one where you stand out as being the black sheep of the family yeah you want one of these yeah that's it that's the review a plane's coming up before we get to that i just want to talk again you know guys stay at home whether you're in the states whether you're in the uk or anywhere else where you are and they say stay at home stay at home stay away from other people and stay safe because this virus does not mess about it doesn't matter whether you're young, you're old, you're anything in between. Trust me, there are so many people now that have actually proven that, hey, you die with this. Uh, it's a very, very serious matter. I've never seen anything like it, and probably neither of you. I'd hate to see anybody go the other way from this useless, horrible disease. That's what a virus is. It's a horrible thing. Should never have uh, been on the planet in the first place. So just just be careful. I just want to say that. And as for fair deal, well, what a great bunch of guys. I really want to say, Poonit, I think, is the name of the guy that uh, is my contact. Uh, but they're all good people there. I've spoke to two or three different ones. And, uh, yeah, very helpful people. And they always do a deal. And that's the main thing. They always do a deal. Yeah. Whatever you get is whatever you get, but, you know, talk to them. Talk, pick the phone up and speak to them because you should never just buy anything. To be honest, never buy anything just straight on the internet. Now, I know you could say, oh, Tony's talking against the dealers, but no, not in reality, I'm not. Dealers have to shift product, and if you want something £50 cheaper and it's going to make a £1,000 sale, I'm sure that people would do that, and uh, that's negotiation and that's what business is yeah being reasonable there's nothing better than a name like fair deal and they're one of the biggest martial dealers around they sell lots and lots of martial stuff so great bunch of guys don't forget that all the info's below yeah so now we're going to go on and get on to the uh yeah to the music don't forget tony mckenzie that's down there too here we go i can't wait well, there you go, the JCM 800 Weed Series Studio Stealth. <laughs> and if ever there was a rock machine, this is it right here. 
All I used was the 1B12 cab and uh, yeah I think it's pretty good. Not as good as a 4B12 of course but uh, yeah what more could you say. The other thing is that uh, I was only running this you can believe it or not on the 5 watt setting. <laughs> I didn't uh, crank it up to the uh, sort of 20 watts because I can imagine how loud it is. It's very loud to start off with. In fact as I drove it with this one and occasionally this one I had to bring in the decimator 2 because it was cramped <laughs> So there he is my friends, for the price of, uh, well, a burger almost, <laughs> here is the Marshall Amp. And it's like half the price of uh, many of the others I could name, and a quarter of the price of some of them, in this room indeed. Uh, so where can I go with this? I said it was good before. <laughs> it is good. In real life, actually, that was a very fast recording. I, I don't have a lot of spare time these days, so there you go. That's my excuse, and I'm not the best player in the world, but you should get an idea of the sounds that you can get out of it, just a standard, with a couple of these crappy little pedals. Uh, yeah, what more can I say? I want to thank Fair Deal for sending me this. Uh, yeah, that was very good of them, uh, because of the, uh, the virus and the rest. 
So I got to see first. Yeah, what more can I ask for? I don't know. Not so much on the 1B12, as I said. <laughs> but that's just life. I'm surrounded by these others. Oh my God. <laughs>